Colors! Let's get it. We are back. Are you ready for another amazing science lesson? Now, today, we are still talking about this thing called mixtures. What are mixtures? If you remember correctly, mixtures are two or more things that are put together. They are easily separated because they maintain their physical properties. The properties do not change. They don't, not even a little bit. They stay the same. And that makes it easy for us to understand and to come up with really creative ways about how to separate these mixtures. All right. Why is that important? Why? Because we're trying to think about classifying matter into groups. And there's all of these really creative ways that we can classify matter into groups based on their physical properties. We saw that we could classify them based on their mass. We saw that we could classify them based on density. We saw that we can classify them based on whether they are a solid, whether they are a liquid, or whether they are a gas. When I was in class, it would be like a solid, a liquid, and then it's a gas, because that's how the particles move. Yes, they're all over the place. What are we talking about today? Today, we are going to be looking at two mixtures, and you are going to have to use your knowledge of science to help me to figure out how would we separate these mixtures. Yes, how are we going to get our objects separated? Because sometimes it's really easy, like my marker that was in the bag, where all I have to do is reach in and pull out the blue marker. It maintains all its physical properties, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. But sometimes it's a tad bit more difficult. Some tools that we're going to be using today is this tool. This is called a sieve. All right, now you're going to notice when I put it really, really close. You see how small those holes are? Sieves come in different sizes. So this is small, this is medium, and this is large. Those holes are really big. You see how easily you can see me through there? Those holes are really big. And sieves is another tool that we can use to help us to separate objects. For example, if I was to take some of my, my greater value lentils. Yes, they are greater value lentils. And I was to stick them off in here. And then I was to come and get some big old lima beans. And I was to stick my lima beans in here. Yes, it, I could. I could come off in here and I could just pick these out one by one. And I could take a lima beans. But what if I told you you had to separate the lentils? Are you gonna really come in here and pick each one of these itty bitty lentils out one by one. No, that will take forever. We don't want to take forever. We want to work smarter, not harder. We want to work efficient and effective, not harder. That is the goal for science. We always want to figure out what is not the quickest way, but what is the absolute best way, the most efficient way to be able to complete this task. Now that's how we can use one of our sieves. A sieve is a wonderful tool for this, but here's where the scientific thinking has to come. If I want to separate these effectively, what sieve is going to be the most effective tool to use? Well, let's go through them one by one. I say bigger is always better, right? Isn't that what they say? Everything's bigger in Texas anyway. I don't know about that. I'm only five foot eight and three fourths inches. No, I'm not. That's not true. I'm sorry, I'm five foot seven. I struggle with it. It's okay. All right. So I'm gonna take my beans, and here's how Steve works. I can take them and I'll pour them on top. Actually, I'm not doing that. I'm not using the big one. No, I'm little, so I'm gonna use the little one. I'm gonna be okay with it. We're gonna roll with it. All right, here we go. Gonna take it, and oh, and nothing happened. Normally with a seed, you can shake it, but I, I failed. Nothing was separated. So that means that this was not the best tool, okay? This was not the best tool. Let's go to my medium size C. There's my medium size. We're gonna try this again. Are we ready? Three, two, one, and dump it. We're gonna dump it, and we are unsuccessful again. Okay, so it's not just about having the C. We also have to have the correct tool. Okay, so I've tried this twice. We failed twice, but that is the beauty in science. Science is all about inquiry. We try and we fail and it's like, yes, I found out a way not to do it. Now I can try a different way. We found two ways that we know that we don't ever have to do again because they do not work. And if you keep going, science will eventually bring you to a more correct answer. All right, so we're gonna try this one. Here's the last one, are we ready? We're gonna try this one. Full faith and confidence, here we go. 
holding it up so we can observe what's happening. Three, two, one. Oh, now notice what's happening. I give it a little shake there. And let's see one more little one. Now we see it. My lima beans are separated from my lentils. So they were still a mixture. We just had to have use the physical property of size to be able to separate them. Because they were different sizes, there was a creative way to use a scientific tool to separate this particular mixture, okay? But it's not only this mixture. It goes on and on and on. Our scientific knowledge can help us to separate things all over the place. Here's a really, really cool one. If I was to take a handful of sand and stick it right up in there like that, yes, rocking and popping, let me get that all out of the way. And then I was to take these, these are called iron filings. Iron filings are tiny, tiny, tiny pieces of metal. They look like little, little super small circular objects, but they're tiny, tiny pieces of metal. And if I was to take those and dump them in my sand and take my little finger and mix them all around, you can't even see where they are anymore. Oh my God, how am I ever gonna get those back? Those are so valuable to me. I need them now. Little scientists, little scholars, what can I do? What scientific knowledge do I have that can help me to get those iron filings back without having to do something drastic. I don't know. You know what, maybe I do know. Maybe I can get back my little seed. Maybe I can use the tiny one. Let's try that. The tiny one didn't work for the, the lima beans. Maybe the tiny seed will work for this. So here we go. Oh, come on. I believe. Three, two, one, and... I want my iron filings back. Give them to me, give them to me, give me the, oh no. All it did was separate the smaller particles from the larger part, but I still have all the sand off in the container. So that, that was unsuccessful. What else do I know about iron? What else do I know about iron that can help me to solve this problem? Scholars, I need your help. You're the answer. Inside those beautiful brains of yours, there's an answer to this problem. I believe it. I know it. I see it. I need you to tell me how can I get my eye violence back. And this will be a great time to pause the video. Just go ahead, hit the button at the bottom. Just boop, pause the video. Talk about it and come back with a solution. All right, we are back. And I know by now you have an answer for me because you are geniuses and you figured this out and you know the way. Now, what is the way? The way is I have to think about the physical properties of all of the objects that are involved. I have sand. What physical properties of sand? Well, I know that sand's particle size is much, much more larger than these iron filings, but that really didn't help me because the sieve still wasn't big enough. So I, I need another way. What do I know about iron? What physical property do I know about iron that might be able to give me an advantage to help me to separate these? And then it hit me. I remember, it was like a bullet train. I remembered that iron is a special kind of metal that happens to be magnetic. They have a magnetic property. Iron is attracted to magnet. Remember magnetism, magnetism attracts and then it repels other magnets if, if the opposite poles are the same poles are facing each other. Opposites attract, the same things repel. So here we go. Let's test this out and see if my iron filings are going to work the way that I think that they're going to work. So if I'm correct, I should be able to take even more of these iron filings and make my problem even worse. Oh my God, I've got so many in there now. But if I'm correct, I should be able to grab these iron filings and I should be able to move them with the magnet. Are we ready? All right, let's see if it works. Here we go. You ready? All right, it's testing time. So I'm gonna take it, 
Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, it worked. I was able to get all of my iron filings back because science rocks, little scientists, little scholars, absolutely. Can you see how important it is to understand the physical property of substances? Oh my God, the physical property of matter, it's so important because it helps us to do scientific things. Things. It helps us to solve problems. It helps us to classify matter. It helps us to break things into groups. It helps us to be able to describe what's happening, but it also is the very answer whenever we need to try to come up with solutions and problems and things of that nature because that's how all of science works together. So here's what I need you to do for today. I need you to explain to me why is it so important even in regards to mixtures, for us to understand the physical properties of an object. Why is it so important for us to have an understanding of the physical properties of an object when we're talking about mixtures? You got it? One more time. Why is it so important for us to understand the physical properties of each object whenever we're talking about mixtures? I know y'all are going to have an amazing answers because you're amazing scientists, and that's what amazing scientists do. They give amazing answers. Have an absolutely wonderful day, and we will be back on with more soon. See you later, scholars.